Uh, after less than uh, one minute of listening to the first track of the first of the new, this new album, uh, the, the mood seems to be clearly less is more, like fat free, mm -hmm. just go to the real thing. Uh, is this album like a kind of antidote to the English Riviera, in a way? Um, it's not necessarily an antidote, it's just, um, it, I guess it's just a much more kind of simple sound than the English Riviera. Like I, with, the, with the English Riviera, Riviera, I wanted to make kind of, I wanted to make a very slick, uh, quite kind of big sounding record. And, and so it's not meant as an antidote, but like more like I just wanted to, I wanted to try and make something that, that, that relied more on kind of songs than it did on product, like slick production. Is it also to say like, a, it's like a, a small is beautiful album in a way? <laughs> I mean, there's no like, there's no real like message <laughs> or anything like that. But, um, but I guess it's kind of, I guess there's, there's part of me that, that wants to, to kind of show like, a, there, there are different ways of doing things. You know, you don't have to do this like, this big kind of uh, production. I don't know, and it's, it's something I haven't done before. So it was just quite an interesting thing to try. Like we heard it, the single Love Letters sounds very late, uh, 60s, 70s. Uh, did you have a song or an artist uh, in mind while you were writing? Uh, well, no, because it's not really, because it's not meant to be like a, it's not, I mean, it's, you know, it's obviously influenced by that kind of period of, of music and stuff, but, but it's not supposed to like be aping anyone or copying anyone. Um, and there's like that, that, kind of, that kind of rhythm and that kind of piano thing I guess I've heard on, on like Beatles records. Um, I mean, sorry, Beach Boys records, um, and and like, but the tracks of the Beach Boys that kind of use that rhythm, it's like they themselves are kind of covers of Motown songs or kind of songs inspired by like Motown records. So it's like I kind of see it as like a, you know, where where I where I kind of what what I was like inspired by wasn't necessarily the gen like the genuine thing that started it. So I don't know. It's like adding to this this tradition of like of copying <laughs> Motown. <laughs> uh, Metronomy uh, began life as a mainly instrumental band. Did you easily invite voices and singing in your uh, in this world? Well from the from the beginning I'd always tried like singing or tried or tried working with voices but um, It just it just kind of took a, a quite a long period of time to become comfortable with the idea of me being the person that was singing. Um, and the first record that like, means you didn't like your voice in the beginning. Well, I just like I didn't really think I wanted to sing. <laughs> like I know it's not that I didn't like it. I just didn't. I hadn't done it. You know, I had for anyone. I think if you just listen to your voice singing, you'll just be like, oh, that's horrible. So it just took some time to get used to it. And I mean, the first record I did when I was. Um, I kind of finished when I was like 22, something like that, maybe. Um, and and so at that point, I was I'd only been like singing for like, I don't know, like a year or two. I don't know. Like it, it just takes a while to get used to it. I think. Can we think for this album there is a calculation like for English in Riviera uh, to be released just before the summer? Um, <laughs> do you imagine your song suitable for summer daydreaming or something think, like that? I think, uh, I think summer is still quite a, f a long way off. Um, no, I don't know. I th this one, this one was just, it's like, you know, you, this one was much more of a, you finish the record and then the record label says when they imagine they're going to schedule it in. So it's kind of more, I mean, I, I guess, I guess it's slightly, it's, I don't know, I think there's probably songs on the, the thing with this record, I think will have a different feel in the summer, I think, and I quite like that, like it's not, it's not meant for summer, and I think it, people like, people have been listening to it over Christmas, like a lot of people have saying, like, oh, it's a kind of melancholy record, it's like, well, you're a melancholy person, it's winter, <laughs> and I think maybe in the summer there'll be tracks on it which, which, like, The res like reservoirs where we were just playing and month of Sundays, I think they're going to have quite a different feel in the summer. So. But it's not intentional. 
So this album was uh, recorded at Turag, Turag Studios in London. Was it like a, the analog mecca? Were you like a little boy in a toy shop? You wanted to try <laughs> I think <everything>? mecca, <laughs> mecca itself a small is mecca, analog. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's a kind of... Uh, no, I don't, I don't know if it's, a, if it's a analog mecca. I mean, like people, lots of studios still have this kind of analog stuff. Like even here, I guess, they, I'm sure they have like a, a tape machine. Um, I mean, the, the difference maybe is with Toyrag is that it's... It, it has, it's connected to this very successful White Stripes record and it's also um, doesn't have the option of a computer or even or even like uh, or even kind of t turning what you've done into digital stuff like you know it's, it, and so it's kind of willfully staying where it like in its place like in the, in the kind of past um, and so it's just kind of I quite like the ethos of it and I quite like the guy that runs it, Liam, I, quite, I, I like his attitude, it's quite kind of, I think to a point he doesn't really know why he's doing what he's doing, <laughs> like he's just kind of collecting the stuff and has made the studio, so I don't know, it's a nice, it's very nice, I like the atmosphere of it. On a, on a song like Reservoir, there is this uh, amazing uh, analog synthesizer sound, like uh, Jean-Jacques Perret, mm -hmm. popcorn <laughs> texture, something oh, like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is it like a... But it's, I mean, like that kind of... Um, yeah, there's like, you know, I guess there's synthesizers are kind of, when they were first, uh, like when they first became available, people would like, you can imagine that a song like that popcorn and someone was like, like playing it. I was like, oh, this sounds a bit like popcorn. And then like, I don't know, I quite like how, how kind of the people were inspired by the sounds that they got out of synthesizers. But I don't know, I, I just like them. I like the kind of the texture that they have. And, and in fact, that, um, on Reservoir, it's like a, it's like a Farfisa organ, so it's kind of stereo lab kind of. Yeah, stereo lab, yeah. For that, they were, they were great. Yeah, yeah, it's their sound. <laughs> but with this analog um, global uh, feeling for this album, it seems that uh, he wanted to to be stick to the pop songs in itself, like uh, songwriting before mm. everything. It seems like uh, uh, at the end of listening to the album, the, we have the feeling that uh, for you, a good song has to be first played with just with a guitar or with a piano, and then after, maybe you can do. Well, what I think I've begun to kind of I, the thing, my kind of ethos or whatever, has turned into the the most important thing is the song, and the song should always the song should work, even if it's played like I don't know, even if it's not produced well or if it's like a kind of cover version, the song should be the song, and it should be like a. That's the most important thing. So I think with this record, I was trying to, like, trying to write good songs and then trying to build the kind of the sound around the songs. Whereas before, I've, I've maybe built, I've kind of started with sounds and then tried to make a song with the sounds. You lost yourself sometimes uh, in too much technology in the past, or no, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, it's just the options, really. I mean, like, I, like the thing is, the technology isn't like. Everyone has it. That's I think that's the problem. Is like is that is that everyone has this technology. So, so to do something that makes that makes you like that makes you stand out as something someone that's kind of interesting is 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 harder in a way because you have to you know you have to if you're using the same tools as everyone else then you're I don't know it's just a, you have the same kind of palette or whatever and, and I think if you take yourself out of that situation and put yourself in a in a in a place like Toerag, it's much more. You have to work much more with your instincts and with. Uh, I don't know. It's just a different way of doing stuff. I read that uh, they must still have two albums to do for Metronomy, despite every time you announce uh, it's the last one. <laughs> uh, so you delay your second life as a producer. No, yeah, I, <laughs> I, um, I've, I think what I've said, which has been. Slightly misinterpreted. I've said that, like I try and make every record as if it's my last record, and I think that's how you should make. You should always, you know, you should make an album. Don't never assume that you'll be able to make another album. So I always try to make the good record, and um, and I don't know. I think like I really love the idea of producing other people, and I think probably by now, like with four records and with feeling a bit more established or whatever, I think now it'd be more realistic to try and produce some people. Maybe. But I, I've got like you know. I've got, there's, there will definitely be more, many more records that I do. 
And my bonus question is: uh, Have you abandoned? <laughs> have you abandoned, <laughs> have you abandoned the practice of remix? I like you. Have at I the what? beginning um, abandoned? Oh uh, yeah, yes, I have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why? No, I didn't. Why? No, I, it's just uh, I. You know, it's funny because people keep on asking me about remixing and. And I was a bit, I was a bit like, oh, I wish people would stop asking me about it because I've stopped doing them. But actually, then I and then I started listening to to remixes that I've done, and I and I actually think I don't, I probably don't give them as much credit in as they deserve in like helping me learn about writing songs. And some of the remixes I think are have kind of helped help in a way join the dots between records. You know, I think they kind of have played quite a big part. But but you know, it's like a, a remix is very much like a it's a transaction, you know, like it's a very faceless thing. So I'm much more interested in production or that kind of stuff. Tell us a bit, uh, tell us about the uh, evolution of your relationship with soul music. With what? Soul music. Ah. From, because of like Motown disco flavor, but uh, what was your relationship, even from when, when you were a kid till starting doing music till now? Yeah, I'm not sure. Like I, I think there's there's a kind of there's a there's like a soul music or whatever, or, or like R&B music or black music or whatever is. I think you have to have a certain you have to have kind of certain credentials to to make that kind of music, and and I think and like. So, for example, like you, if you kind of come onto the scene and you're making, and you're me and you're from Devon and you're making like soul, trying to make soul music, I think people are, are rightly wary, or you know, they're like, well, how do we know you have a soul? <laughs> and and like, so I figure over the period of these records, I'm I'm like I'm getting more comfortable with with the kind of music I make, and I think I've always really enjoyed like quite nice rhythmical. Kind of soulful music. I don't know if soul is the right word, but I'm using it because you said it. But uh, like, you know, I think I think probably I'm. By now, I feel like if I do want to make a record that 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 has that kind of R and B soul feel to it, I feel like I, you know, people can trust me. Like it's not. I'm not just doing this on my first record. You know, like it's. I think it's. I've made. I've made a bed for myself. I can now lie on and listen to soul. <laughs> <laughs> At the moment, uh, Luke Benga is the only one who works on a solo project. Maybe it's too early to talk about it, but uh, is, is it possible <laughs> for you, your future? Sorry? So, on a solo project. Well I, well, I mean, the thing is, it's like it kind of, this is, it's, this is my solo project and it's a band project. Like it's, it's kind of everything. It's, it's all, you know, it's all I have. It's all I have. <laughs> okay. No, no. I mean, it's, all, it's what I'm interested in doing. You know, like the, you know, I think, and I think that's the thing about metronomy is that it, it is, in songwriting terms and in production terms, like it's a solo project. But in in a kind of studio recording and a live performance, like it's it's a band, and I, and, I, and it's kind of the two things live together, really. Well, what are you the most proud uh, with this album? If you compare with the previous um, ones, is there something in particular? I, I just mean, just, just that it's another. I mean, like I, I'm just proud that it was the way it was made. I think, and and how it's kind of people seem to respond to it in a in a kind of I don't know in a, for something that was made in quite an old-fashioned way, and, and it doesn't sound like kind of a like necessarily like a radio record or a kind of chart record. People are, seem to be really embracing the way it is and that's I feel proud of that it's interesting because even if you're not doing the same music but if we take for example Daft Punk last album which was very something very analog in like an old-school way the way you describe the way you you create this new album for you even you have some pop in your DNA but you're always connected with a certain electronic scene mm -hmm. and now you are looking for this very uh, analog stuff do you think that uh, uh, when you people who starting doing music with too much computer now they want less and less computer and more and more uh, wood uh, flesh and just well I mean I think I think it's something which people don't like you know if you were if you were born in 1990 and like you started 
making music kind of, uh, I don't know, like in 2008 or something like that, you know what I mean? Like, you would, there, there's no reason why you would have ever used a tape machine. And, and I used it, when, when I was in a band, when I was like 16 and we started recording, we were using a kind of home studio, which at the time was, was a tape machine. And, and so I just think people, it's like, people will, will definitely become more interested in it because they have no idea about how it works, you know? And, and I think there's, you know, I think it's nice that like, that with this record and with like the Daft Punk record, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot more records in that kind of vein. But like, I think, you know, people are gonna, people are taking more of an interest in that way of recording. And, and yeah, and I, I mean, it, that's, it, I think it's as simple as people, who, young people in bands or young people making music have never used a tape machine before and might be interested. When you're not doing music, you're listening to a lot of music? Are you like a music addict or always <laughs> music in? Or I, listen, I listen to quite a lot of music, yeah. But I listen to the same music all the time. I, like I never really, I'm not really trying to look for new music. I don't know, like it's... So what are the stuff that you're always listening to? It's kind of classic rock. <laughs> like, no, not classic rock, but I don't know, like, I'm always listening to like Stevie Wonder or uh, like Joni Mitchell or the Beach Boys. Uh, I don't know, that kind of stuff. Or like, or I listen to the modern music. I listen to stuff like Kendrick Lamar or the, like Beyonce or you know that kind of uh, modern kind of R and B music. You have already in mind what's going to be the next Metronomy project, or not yet? Uh, I do, I do. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I can, <laughs> it seems very early to say anything. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you.